Now we know the outcome of the US election. We have to wait now until the middle of January before Donald Trump takes up office. But in this period, we have some interesting historical statistics to work on to work out just where the markets are going. Of course, we've seen extreme volatility uh, since uh, that day, uh, Wednesday morning, when we got the results uh, from the US election. Ron William from RW Advisory uh, joins us now with some more analysis. And you brought along some charts, which gives us some feel for how things have happened in the past and perhaps maybe some direction we could expect um, as a result of this. Yes, well, we would discuss this uh, event uh, many a time beforehand, and here we are the week after to, to look at the charts and what a big move we've seen in, in, in a two-way direction. Now, the, the technical setup has always been uh, signaling a bearish asymmetric risk, uh, which, which we did see into the election. And, and so on a short-term basis, we did have that 5% negative slide uh, from, from the uh, previous all-time high at 2194. Now, this is the uh, benchmark S&P 500 index, isn't it, over the last year or so? Yes, yeah, so this is the S&P 500, and here we can see the, uh, the asymmetric risk into the election, the short-term risk, where we had that 5% uh, slide. Uh, that was amplified by the revival of the uh, FBI investigation probe just 11 days ahead of, of, of the elections. But either way, the market did magnify a potential Trump uh, victory by uh, increasing its risk uh, measures uh, to the downside. Now, we've had a flip-flop reaction where the market has now rallied the best two weeks we've seen in the last two years in the U.S. equity markets. And the big question is what happens next? Now, technically, uh, on the S&P, we do need to see a move above the all-time high at 2194. The Dow has already made a new all-time high breakout. Uh, but remember, the Dow is a narrower index. So we do need further sustainable uh, support of that move uh, with uh, some of the broader uh, indices. Now. I'm still calling this a, a speculative uh, upside uh, move if we do get a, a more broader based new high breakouts uh, across uh, across each of the indices uh, with a lot of risk, what I, what, what I call the greater fall danger zone. Uh, you can trade it, you can make money, but you're taking on a lot of risk in that, in that environment. So best to use uh, tight stops. Now, to the downside, uh, do be aware of the key support which actually created the lift off in the first place. And that was a confluence of support that came in at 2090 on the S&P 500. And that's the 200 day moving average, which everyone knows and loves. Uh, the value zone, which is a probability distribution uh, tool that I used uh, to measure this, the ticks in the market. But also um, the GAN fan lines that I use, all three of those different tools suggesting that there was key support at 2090, a break of which to the downside would signal an extension of that downside risk into 2000 and 1940. Um, talking about risk, um, when placing a bet, of course, on the markets, it's always good to have stops in place. What would you do in terms of your recommendation for a trade at these levels? Well, I would certainly be using tight trailing stops. Uh, a profit isn't a profit until you actually take it out of the market or at least lock that profit in, uh, particularly when the volatility has been so uh, uh, enormous in, in both directions. So I would say, you know, uh, go in as, as quickly as possible as, uh, and, and, and get out. Uh, with, with tight stops. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's bring up a second chart because this gives an indication as to it's past experience, isn't it, of the, uh, I think the second period, I think, isn't it, of some of these. Certainly Barack Obama, you've got the second uh, four years of his eight year tenure here, but you've got um, uh, presidents going back to Lyndon B. Johnson. Explain what's going on here. Well, well this chart here shows you the two way or, or double edged sword to, uh, uh, nature of the markets. They tend to price flip. Uh, and so what that means is whatever move uh, we start off with, we get an opposite equal or greater reaction in the market. So what does that mean? That means over the last hundred years, uh, these are the um, presidential campaigns which have yielded opposite reactions into the election and then after the election. So we're talking about time periods here. So here, for example, uh, Obama in 2012, we had a positive reaction, uh, sorry, we had a negative reaction, then it flip-flopped to, to positive. In the case of uh, Trump, uh, we've had a net positive move. Remember the biggest uh, two-week uh, positive move we've seen in two years, which is likely to now flip-flop uh, in the opposite direction uh, in the coming weeks and months. So we're looking here at one week performance versus one to three months performance. There is a difference when you go further out down the timeline. Let's, um, let's, let's have a look now at, um, at uh, another chart. This is a chart you have um, spoken to us about before, the uh, presidential election cycle. Yes. And this is a, um, over a, a four year period, isn't it? 
Yes, so everything we've been looking at has been, it has been going forward into the future, but actually retrospectively there's a lot of things we can learn about uh, past history. Mm -hmm. History might not uh, repeat in exactly the same way, but it does rhyme. And what, it sh what this chart shows here is that the rhyme is often found in second term presidential elections. As you, as you mentioned, we have discussed this in the past, and it's, it's the fact that second term has tend to be in office for a lot longer, eight years, and as that term continues into the final year, their, their power uh, as a pre presidential candidate tends to diminish, policy ammunition starts to decrease, and in the end, that starts to be a negative for the equity market in the final year, on average, minus 13%. Um, and that's what we see here on the, on the orange line, just showing that second term elections in the final year is negative versus the normal election cycle where it's just a, uh, a new incumbent. Uh, what this means is there's a poison chalice effect. So while it could have been Trump, it could have been Clinton, either candidate would have still uh, had to carry on that, that uh, challenge of the eight year previous term. And it does suggest that we get a year end uh, negative performance uh, uh, this year and potentially into early next year. Yeah, and you've drawn here a box on the right hand side, Q4 danger zone. Yes, and this is supported by various other cycles which I've also prepared for this interview. Uh, on the, uh, four, uh, this is the four year cycle, but there's also a one and ten year cycle which gives, gives a, a robust cycle system. Well, let's, let's have a look at that one year, one year chart as well, the next uh, chart that we've got in a row here. Uh, and this, uh, I know that again, this is a, a hundred years of data, isn't it, or can, uh, brought back now into sort of the, the one year cycle? Yes, yeah, so, so the histogram, uh, so, so the, the bars going up and down are basically showing 100 years worth of monthly data, which allows us to look at the seasonality trends. Uh, a lot of people talk about seasonality, but here we can actually look at the seasonality uh, on average statistically over the last 100 years. The, or, uh, the gold line actually shows what has happened this year. So this way we can compare what has happened with what tends to happen uh, on a historical basis. And we can see, um, if I just take you back uh, to uh, Q2 of this year, we did get a peak into Q2, which is traditionally expected uh, just after the earnings season. Then we uh, get that uh, sell in May respite to the downside. Um, but then there's an interruption in the, during the summer period, which is often overlooked, and that's the, the, the summer rally, which we did get, and a peak out in August, which is quite traditional. Now, the change or the slight twisting of the cycle this year has been that we didn't get as much downside in the month of uh, uh, September. Mm -hmm. What we have had is though a, a sideways flatlining in the market and that did happen in September and then followed through into October and of course maybe the cycles were overridden a little bit by the US uh, election cycle which, which would be the, the, the bigger uh, meaningful one and in between there we have the US elections and a potential uh, push to the downside into December uh, as part of this price flip-flop from positive to negative. Now, usually at the end of the year, we get this Santa Claus rally, which I think most people are aware of. That might not happen this year. Because we've already had uh, the biggest and the best part of the move already, um, and because this is the year of the presidential, um, uh, end of the presidential uh, term, it might actually result in a negative skew uh, into December. And remember, this is what happened last year in December. We did have a negative December, and that also was earmarked by the Fed hike uh, event, which uh, happens to coincide with what, what we're expecting in the coming weeks. And of course also the um, Italian referendum as well, an extra element of potential volatility in the market. Yes, and so looking outside, it's, it's, it's not all US-centric, although it might seem that way. Looking globally, certainly just a, a where we are right, right now in Europe, uh, closer to home, we have uh, the Italian referendum and a whole bunch of other event risk ahead. Mm. Uh, and again, um, I want to finish off with another chart that those that have seen your interviews before will, will recognize this. But as we continue to talk, obviously, you, you're developing your ideas. Um, the decennial cycle. Yes, yeah, so the decennial cycle is a very long term, big picture cycle, which looks at exactly that. that 10-year cycle over the last 100 years. So each of these bars is, is a one year's worth of price activity. Um, what it often shows is, is the, the technical but also economic cycle that, that uh, ebbs and flows within the market. And it shows basically that the fifth year of the decade is, is usually the best year. That hasn't really been the case this time around, but that's statistically what it shows on average. Uh, but it also shows, more importantly to here and now, uh, that the sixth and seven year, but in particular the seventh year, is the most negative in terms of uh, price performance in the equity market. And so we could see Q4 
2016, so where we are right now, into next year as being quite negative. And it's something that I'm calling the rogue wave, uh, uh, where we get this amalgamation of downside risk into next year. Now, keep in mind, event risk-wise, we also have a, many uh, things to, to look out for, including many of the European elections mm. and also some economic machinations that might produce more downside risk. Um, I'm, I'm interested in actually in this and just ask one more question because um, uh, previously we've spoken about 2017. I know you've gone into more detail about this. In previous interviews you, you talked a little bit about the way 2017 looks to you. As you say, these are, are one-year bars here uh, and of course next year we've got a lot of events to, to watch out for as you say. But quite often when you get a, a downside in the market it's very steep on the downside and there's quite a heavy retracement quite quickly. But my previous interviews with you suggesting next year it's a bit more drawn out. Yes, I, I think because we haven't seen much of that uh, extended downside risk yet, that just compresses the cycle and makes the downside risk even greater and even faster. It's, it's just the law of physics, really. So what we have said, you, you quite rightly to, uh, to make the point, uh, we've had many short-term flash crashes to the downside, even on sterling as a case in point, but we haven't had anything that's been long and, and sustainable. And I cer certainly think that next year, based upon the technicals and the statistical work that, that we've discussed, that there'll be more downside risk, which would be an extended stage-by-stage uh, -stage process uh, for, for downside risk into next year. And finally, this time next year, when we regroup, when we look at the back end of 2017, do you fully expect that, that cycle to have bottomed out? I think it might take a, a year or two. Uh, remember, we've been up for a record amount of time anyway, so nothing goes up in a straight line forever. And so that would be part of the healthy correction, but also spacing process. So we, we're likely to get downside with maybe sideways churning uh, in the market. So it might be a one to two year affair. OK, all right. Uh, Ron, thanks so much indeed. It's a long time to be strapped into one seat, but looking like 2017 could be well, an interesting year for those trading the markets. That's Ron William from RW Advisory.